Welcome back to In a Tiny Garden. This week, or rather weekend, I'll be back out at the allotment getting things done like planting out the peas and the sweet peas, finally. I've got some twiggy branches from pruning at college and then I'll also be planting out all the potatoes. So I like to do this all in one go, but I'll explain when we're out there. So stay tuned. Daily checks on all the seedlings is important to ensure they have enough water, turning them in the light and to clear up any dead leaves. I open the cold frame in the morning, especially when it's sunny and close it at night when the temperatures in early April were still reaching zero or below. The sunny days also mean the compost can dry out quite quickly, especially if they've been in the wind for the day. Watering from below is best at this stage, but if they're really dry, I do both. If you don't have time to inspect everything and water in the morning or evening, then do it whenever you can. It's definitely the most time consuming time of year, but also the most important as you want to make sure you keep your seedlings healthy. I'm going to be planting the potatoes again this year using the no dig method. So this means that I'm putting down a nice thick layer of organic material. I've already used some compost, but here I'm just topping it up with some well rotted stable manure from horses, just to give it an extra boost of nutrients because I grew squash here last year. The reason that I'm using the no dig method again this year is because I had such good results from it and I did use the trench method the first time I grew potatoes and I did get nice big potatoes but the hassle of having to dig a huge trench and the detriment to the microorganisms in the soil and the soil structure meant that I think the benefits for me of using the no dig method outweigh the benefits of a trench method. So that's what I'll show you how to do here. I'm also reusing this permeable weed membrane that the potatoes will grow through. But it didn't quite cover the end, so this is where I'll start with the first earlies. I'm growing seven different varieties this year, most of which I grew last year, but some I couldn't get a hold of, so some have been subbed. But it still means I'll have a good mix of first earlies, second earlies, main crop, and a late main crop as well. As explained in the first video, all of these potatoes have been indoors in a bright position, chitting, which means they've got shoots ready to go out and get a head start in the ground. I treat all the potato varieties the same except for when I harvest them because I find it much easier. So they all chit together and they all get planted out at the same time together. I'm going to start by planting the first early potatoes at the end as those will be the ones that are harvested first. And you want to make sure that there's three strong shoots, about two or three strong shoots at the top of the potatoes and remove any that are on the bottom or that are sort of surplus to the three, two or three. And then I dig a hole about the depth of my trowel and I just slip in a potato and cover it over and it's, it's really that easy for the no dig method. So again, I'm removing excess shoots to leave about three. And then I just kind of slip it in behind my trowel. And then as the trowel comes up, it starts filling the, the hole with uh, the compost. You really want to make sure that none of the remaining shoots get knocked off in the process of putting them in the ground. Now, what I didn't realize as I, as I did these three on the end is um, I actually used the wrong potatoes. I used a main crop by accident. So... <laughs> I actually need to um, take them out because my cunning plan that I did last year is to grow the first earlies at the end here, then second earlies, and then continue with main crop and late main crop right at the end, which means that as I harvest, I can roll up that weed membrane and plant something else in their place as they're harvested until I get to the path. And this is what I did last year, but in a different bed. And I'm using the weed membrane again this year because the weeds, especially uh, couch and bindweed, are quite bad in this area. So these are my proper first early potatoes, which will be harvested first after about 90 days in the ground. And these are my Red Duke of Yorks, which were really good last year and really, really tasty, strong potato flavor with a really bright red outside, but uh, white, normal kind of flesh in the inside. And then I actually use the plant labels here to help anchor the weed membrane into the ground as well around each potato hole, along with the big staples you can see here. So planting into the weed membrane is a bit trickier than just doing no dig in the open ground. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit, but it is definitely worth it, especially if you've got perennial weed issues. It just means that you can't kind of interplant things that are quicker. 
So they're not being planted as deeply as a conventional trench, but the great thing about the weed membrane is that you don't even need to earth up the potatoes, which is when you kind of pull up some compost around the base of the plant to exclude light to stop the potatoes turning green. And this kind of does that for you, which is great. I think if I used a bit of earthing up, then I might have a slightly bigger yield, but the benefits outweigh the negatives here with the weed issues I have around here. And what's great is the potato roots go deep down into the soil and the actual potatoes just form in the compost layer on the top, which, it, which I learned from Charles Dowding. Also a nod to Charles are these Charlotte potatoes. So these are second early potatoes and his favorite variety, and they're becoming one of my favorites as well. They're quite a good kind of standard potato, really good flavor and yield, and they do really well this way. So in terms of when you're going to plant out your potatoes, like I said, I do all mine at the same time and it does depend on your last frost dates. So you want your potato shoots to be coming up above the ground after the last frost dates, unless you're using a fleece, especially if you've decided to plant out your first early sort of March time, which is the traditional time for first earlies, second earlies early to mid April, and the main crop usually mid to late April, but I'm doing all of mine in early April. I'm planting three tubers of each variety with all tubers spaced 30 centimeters apart and my one meter wide beds. So the holes in the weed membrane were pre-cut and sealed with a lighter so they don't fray and can last for years. And these are the pink fur apple potatoes, which I couldn't get hold of last year, but they are really, really tasty. They're kind of a waxy texture, but they're main crop, so it's quite unique. And I've only removed a few of the shoots here, so it's all right to leave on kind of four or five, uh, especially if they're small, as long as you make sure that most of the shoots are facing upwards once you put them in the planting hole. These are Pink Gypsy, which I'm looking forward to trying, despite it being a substitute. You can tell which ones I had planned to grow again, and substitutes are written in white across them. Unfortunately, I don't have any of the blue potatoes this year, because they were all sold out. So that's it for planting potatoes in the ground at the allotment this year. Seven varieties, three of each, makes 21 plants here. I held back a few tubers to plant in pots later on and gave the rest away to some new pot holders. I use big pots, minimum 30 centimeters, fill a few centimeters of peat-free potting compost mix with manure in the bottom, put a tuber in, shoots facing up, and then I'll fill it halfway up the pot. And then once the plants have grown 20 centimeters high or they're just peaking above, I'll fill the rest with compost and keep it well watered. It's much easier to harvest this way in pots, but it takes a lot more compost and it's harder to keep on top of watering. But before I had the allotment, this is how I grew a handful of potatoes each, each year in the tiny garden. That last pot you see is actually made for potatoes and I've had it about four years. Uh, you can lift out the insert to check on them. The rest I found at the allotment or previously used them to grow fruit trees. Now let's have a quick checkup on the sweet potatoes this week. Actually, I'm also going to be taking these off, which are growing really, really quickly. So by the time next week rolls around, I'll probably do this. And in fact, maybe I'll just do it right now. These are the slips. And so you just break, break them off at the base. And then when I break this off, more will come. And then I'll be putting this into water and then into some soil of its own um, to grow on for sweet potatoes. Comment below and let me know what potato varieties you're growing this year. Are any of them similar? Um, do you grow main crops as well as first earlies and second earlies? I do, just to extend the season, but I know blights can sometimes take hold. So yes, let me know. I'm now going to plant out the first batch of lettuce seedlings at the allotment. I ensure that I water them beforehand so the plugs slide out nicely and the roots don't break. I really like this tray size and like that it's hard recycled plastic to last ages, but I did get my finger stuck briefly a couple of times, so using a pinky would help. I've chosen quite a few different varieties to give slightly different flavors, textures, and colors, and I made the beds about one meter wide, so I'll be planting six in each row to give about 15 centimeters between them, especially for non-harding lettuce, which means I'll be picking the outer leaves regularly and then there'll be 30 centimeters between each row. And you don't need a measuring tape for this, I just decided to be exact. 
If you are growing harding lettuces, then you might want to give them a bit of extra space. But like I said, I'm going to be growing these as cut and come again. So I'll be picking the outer leaves as they grow. And I try and choose the biggest, healthiest seedlings in the tray and while we'll be eating the rest as baby leaves or giving them away. But I hate choosing between them. <laughs> So I bury the seedlings deeply, which supports their existing leaves and helps them produce sturdy new ones. It's quite good for um, if it's windy as well. So it's, it's good and I've had good results this way. So like I said, about 30 centimeters between each of the rows there. And I'm planting just three of each of the varieties I've sown because for some reason I've decided to sow a whopping 10 different varieties for this tiny plot. Um, but we do like lettuce and it's so nice when you've got different uh, flavors, textures, and especially colors in the salad bowl. Like all the beds, this one was covered in a few centimeters of compost and well-rotted horse manure. So it's a really good texture to work in and the worms have already sort of incorporated it for me. So you can see there really well how deeply I'm planting them. And there's a nice root system on these plugs as well, which is, is nice. There's not an exact science as to exactly when you plant them out, but um, basically big enough that the slugs don't get them all in one bite. And they've got like a few nice sturdy leaves on them. I'm planting these ones quite close to some radish, but those radish were sown in early winter, so they're actually about to come out soon. They're actually a winter variety, so there'll be more space for those lettuces to grow. I think my biggest struggle here is choosing which uh, seedlings to leave behind, um, which I guess is a good problem to have. I've got strong seedlings, but still, it's difficult to choose which babies you like best. Once it comes to harvest time, I can take you through all the different varieties that I've sown. But for now, the leaves are so small, I may as well wait until we get a nice harvest and I can taste them. So that's the last one going in. So that was about 30 lettuce seedlings in an area 100 centimeters by 130 centimeters approximately. It's a good idea to water them in directly after planting them so that the water kind of swishes the soil around the roots. And I also put a fleece on them for the first couple of weeks, which mostly protects them against cold winds. So this is me coming back to give them another water. And these are the spinach that we planted in the first episode, middle of Feb, and carrot seedlings just poking up above the soil. So I went back to get the peas and sweet peas to plant out at the allotment around the 5th of April. But after lots of standing around, I decided as there was a frost forecast that evening, I'd fleece them in their trays and come back the next day to plant them into the ground, which actually turned into four days. Peas are hardy, but I had them in the lean-to greenhouse and didn't want to shock them with the cold wind. So I ended up getting them out in the ground on the 9th of April. I'm spacing the peas about 7 centimeters apart in two rows that are about 15 centimeters apart, but I multi-sewed a couple peas per module. These are the early onward I subsequently thinned to just two. I'm using two methods to secure the peas and help them climb. Firstly, organic twine tied to old rusty scaffolding poles we found in abundance on the plot, and then I'll use tall twiggy branches. These early onward variety I sowed a little earlier than the rest with the sweet peas and you can tell as they've suffered a little being in their trays for so long. I sowed all the other peas in early March on the week 9 video. I'm again planting the seedlings nice and deep so just up to their lower leaves and this will give them some stability as well. You can really see the roots have quite tangled. I've got four seedling plugs of each variety, so I'm growing quite a few here again, but it'll give me kind of different colors and types, including mange too. I'm planting the peas 
uh, with the mosh too in rough height order with the shorter ones being at the front that get the most sun and then I'll have the taller ones at the back that are slightly shaded by a uh, rose. So as you can see there, there's now just the two pea plants per plug. I really love these root trainer trays. This is the first year using these ones for peas and they're much easier to use and less fiddly than the type that open up all the way. They'll also last way longer, so they're, they're recycled hard plastic. I discussed this in the pea sewing video from early March, but pea roots are really long and so by giving them this long root run, they get off to a really good start. You can of course plant peas directly now, but they can get eaten by mice, so I prefer this method because once the peas have a little shoot on them, they're much less enticing to rodents like mice. Peas climb by clinging on to supports with their fine tendrils. So ideally they need fine twigs or nice rough twine. Beans, on the other hand, twist their whole stem up vertical support, so it's much easier, and I'll be doing that in a few weeks with the beans. So I'm just putting in the rusty metal poles I mentioned earlier, and then I'm just threading through some of that twine just to make sure that all the tendrils have something to cling onto, and then I'm tying it as tight as I can on the other end of each pole. And like I said, the kind of fuzzier your twine is, the better, because the tendrils are really fine. I'm putting in quite a few and this is because it's really windy at our allotment site and you can actually see that they've started bending over already and what I'll actually do is go through and for the really long ones actually tie them onto the twine themselves just just for a few of them and as they grow up I'll put more and more of this twine all the way up the kind of rusty poles and the ones down at that end like early onward are quite a lot shorter than the ones at the other end which can reach almost two meters so rusty poles and the twiggy branches are kind of as tall as I could find them. These branches I'm using are from pruning a cornice in the garden a midwinter fire that I have and the others are from college so there's a coppiced hazel in there as well and it works well um, here like this or you can make teepees and wrap the twine around in circles all the way up so you can do this with bamboo canes as well but you do need that twine if it's for peas. And I'm just twisting the twiggy bits at the top around each other so they kind of support each other as well. And while I'm here, I'm just going to put up some twine to support the broad beans as well that were planted in autumn winter. These are Aqua de Luce Claudia, which are a good one to grow early. So I actually direct sowed these ones. And I'm pleased to say the black bean aphid hasn't found them yet like they do most years. And that's finally it for planting out peas. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope I got all the things done that I said I was going to get done. And um, if you've really enjoyed, then please hit the subscribe button, which I think it will be over here. And then if you want to watch last week's video, it'll be here or next week's video by the time this you're watching this, which will be here. <laughs> Thanks so much.